Today we're going to take a look at another use of the chi-squared distribution, and that is testing a claim about a single variance. Our question is going to be, how do we test a claim about a variance? And when we're testing a variance, a single variance, we have a test statistic, which is a chi-squared statistic. The formula with a variance for chi-squared is the sample size minus 1 times the sample variance divided by the sample, I'm sorry, divided by the population variance. And we need to be very careful or be very aware of what we have in the problem. We use sigma and s to represent the standard deviation. But when those pieces are squared, and we either have sigma squared and s squared, those represent what we call the variance. And so the formula says s squared and sigma squared. Those values represent the variance if it's already been squared. If it hasn't been squared, we would have sigma and s, the standard deviations, which need to be squared in order to find the test statistic. So we need to be very careful. Do we have s or s squared? Do we have sigma or sigma squared and not get those backwards? Also, with chi-squared, we need to know the number of degrees of freedom we have. The degrees of freedom are always one less than the sample size with the chi-squared. And something that's unique about testing a variance is that it can be either left, right, or two-tailed test. And this is very unique because normally with the chi-squared, we're dealing with a right-tailed test. But in the context of the variance, it's the only time we're allowed to have either a left-tail test or a two-tail test, which doesn't happen as often. So the best way to really attack this is to run through an example. So let's say a customer wants to know how the cost of a list of school supplies varies from store to store. A teacher claims the standard deviation is only $15. So to test this, the customer surveys 43 stores and finds a mean of $84 and a standard deviation of $12. Test, whoops, test if 
the standard deviation is less than the teacher's claim. of $15 if alpha equals 0 0.05. So we've got a claim about the standard deviation. The claim is that the standard deviation is $15. But notice that's the standard deviation, not the variance. The variance is the standard deviation squared. So when we set up our null hypothesis, our null hypothesis will state that the variance, or sigma squared, is equal to the standard deviation squared, or 15 squared, which is 225. Notice again, we had to square the standard deviation to get the variance. The alternate hypothesis, we believe that the variance is actually less than 15 squared, or less than 225. Because we're interested in less than, we actually have a left-tailed test. So let's draw a little picture of our left-tailed test. Chi squared is skewed right. And we're interested in being in the left tail. Now, in the survey, the standard deviation ended up being 12 compared to the actual mean of 15. Is that enough to reject the null hypothesis? Well, first, we need to know the degrees of freedom. The sample size, minus 1. 43 minus 1, we've got 42 degrees of freedom. And then we'll also calculate the test statistic. The test statistic is chi-squared is equal to n minus 1, 42 minus 1, times s squared. S, I'll, I'll go ahead and actually write the formula here one more time so we can see it. n minus 1 times s squared divided by sigma squared. S is the standard deviation of the sample. So for my sample, the customer did a survey and found a standard deviation of 12. That is my sample standard deviation, 12 squared to get the variance, divided by sigma, the claimed distribution of the population the claimed standard deviation is 15. So we'll divide by 15 squared. And when I do this on my calculator, oops, sorry, the sample size was 43. 43 minus 1 times 12 squared divided by 15 squared, we get a test statistic of 26.88. Now that we have a test statistic, we're ready to find the p-value, or the probability my null hypothesis is true. The probability the standard deviation is actually 15. It's a chi-squared CDF. Normally with chi-squared, we go from smallest to largest. Here, the smallest value on the chi-squared is going to be 0 to the largest value of 26.88 comma, our degrees of freedom, we said was 42. And let's see what the calculator gives us for that value. To get the chi-squared distribution, we'll hit second, vars, so we get the distribution. We'll scroll down to chi-squared CDF, going from 0 to 26.88. Our degrees of freedom are 42. And we'll hit paste. If you have the older version of the software, you just enter those numbers in separated by commas, like you see on the screen here. 
And when we hit Enter, we find a probability of 0 0.0337. 0 0.0337. That p-value tells us that based on our sample, the probability that the null hypothesis is true, that the standard deviation of the cost of school supplies being 15 is 3.37%. There's a 3% chance that that null hypothesis is true. Well, if that's the case, we're ready to make a decision. The decision point is always compared to the alpha. And we said alpha was going to be 0.05. 5% probability will still believe the null hypothesis. We only have a 3% probability, so we can no longer believe the null hypothesis. So we will reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that decision is that the p-value is less than the alpha value, or that 0 0.0337 is less than the 0 0.05. And so our conclusion, which focuses on the alternative hypothesis in context, we can say that there is sufficient evidence to conclude the standard deviation of school supplies cost is less than $15. And that's all there is to testing a single variance. It's actually the easiest chi-squared problem to solve because it's very straightforward. We don't have to find all those expected values that we do in other chi-squared tests. So we test a single variance with our new chi-squared test statistic. And then we run it through the same process of a hypothesis test that we've been seeing for several weeks now. We should be very good at setting up these hypothesis tests. So you can go ahead and take a look at a few of these on your homework assignment. We'll look at this more in detail in class, and we will see you then.